Okay, so what we're basically going to do now is create a directory that we're going to put our key in. So all you have to do in WinSkip is go to F7 down here, create directory. Make sure that you're on the server side, not your local side. You can tell by the color change. So create directory or hit F7. We're going to call this .ssh. We're going to set our permissions. Make sure that you set the executable bit or the X bit. That makes it so that the directory is visible. I don't want to get into a whole thing about Unix permissions, but you can take the R off of the others, and you could actually group doesn't matter in this case, but you can leave it at 750, so put the X there. So we create that, then we're going to go into that file, and you'll see there's nothing there. So what we're basically going to do is create a file, and the way you do that, you can either right mouse click and go to New, File, or do the shortcut again, Shift F4. So that's going to come up with our name, we call it authorized keys. And see that's going to pop up a local editor. So basically what we have to do is go to our putty key gen and we'll go back here to start. I'll show you in case you closed it. Go to putty, go to putty gen and load the key. So we use new private key. It's going to ask you for your password. And you'll notice now that this is all filled in. So this is what we need. So we'll highlight this box. Notice it says public key for pasting into OpenSSH authorized underscore keys file. So that's what we're making. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to right click and hit copy. Then we can close that. We don't need it anymore. And on the putty you can either hit control V which is the shortcut or you can just hit the clipboard and it'll paste it in there. So the trick here is it's like a file editor but it's not really. It's not really made for that. It's just for quick down and dirty stuff. So hit this little button far to the left called Close Editor, and it's going to ask if you want to save it. Now that saves it on the server, not on your local machine, so that it does exactly what you want it to do. So we'll hit Yes. And then it's up and ready to go. So now our authorized keys are there. So let's see what happens now. So if we log out of, of Close WinSkip, we'll terminate it. Yep. Now we'll go back and go to WinSkip again and open, but this time we'll actually f start a new session and we'll call it my server name, You can, because that's your host name. This time www-data, or again whatever yours happens to be. We're leaving everything the same. We can say save it. So we can save this session as whatever. I'll leave it for this. You can put a name in if you want. So now what we have to do is basically just log in and you notice, boom, it came right up. If you were quick, you could see that it authenticated against the key. So I didn't have to type anything. The only thing you have to remember is if you shut your machine down, that PuTTY, P agent in PuTTY does not stay resident. It won't automatically load itself, and it's done that way for security reasons. So, you know, when you're about to, to do FTP or whatever, just make sure that you go to PuTTY, P agent and click it. Don't worry if it if it uh, it's already loaded. It'll tell you, so you don't have to worry. So once it's there, you can see how easy that is. So once again, I'll do it. So we'll go to to programs, WinSkip. Say I want to do some editing now. We'll go to my program. We just hit login, connects, authenticated. Boom, zero to do. And as a side note, I'll add that this same technique works for putty if you happen to have root access or, or at least access to your server we can do a very similar thing we'll just create a new one stay on 22 we'll call this the same whatever you want to call it well, if you have a server name you can call it that and for connections things get a little bit more uh, crazy but for SSH I always say two only because SSH one was a little insecure there was a bug in it unless somebody tells you you have to use it don't uh, so we have our session we can save that and our connection you can actually keep it rolling data you know your telnet which we're not going to use you may have to change the translation it depends on your server but all those things are really for another day. I just basically want to show you that you can do this once 
and be done. So again, it's going to say the server's key isn't in the system, but now it is. I'm going to log in as myself, and it authenticated. So that gives you a better idea of what WinSkip was showing as well. Authenticating with public key, my key from this machine, blah, blah, blah. That's all logged, and now I'm ready to go. Okay, I hope that helps, and that should make your life much better and a lot more secure.